Welcome back to Betting People with Maddie Plale. Um, in part one, we discussed how Maddie got into racing and a bit about how she got into betting. Um, now, obviously, she's known for working for Racing Post. Um, so I'm going to ask you, Maddie, actually, um, taking your experience into account, what advice would you give to people who are just starting out in journalism, and perhaps especially racing journalism, um, knowing what you do now? Yeah, um, I mean, it's funny. I, f I still find it kind of crazy that um, people would come to me for advice. It seems seems mad, but um, quite a few people have done, and I'm, you know, to be honest, I'm flattered by that. Um, you know, I, I could sit here and regurgitate the usual. I mean, I think you have to work hard, um, and you've got a network. I think if you're if you're wanting to work in racing. Um, you've just got to take every opportunity that comes your way try and get as much work experience on your cv as you possibly can um everyone you meet you know try and as i say network but i think more than that i mean if you would have asked me that question a couple of years ago i probably would have said get on social media get writing a blog get doing a podcast get doing whatever it is that you want to do and um you know that's a great avenue to get your work seen but to be honest in the current social climate i think it's a very congested space and if you want to um if you want to you know succeed and and, and set yourself apart then you really need to think about being different and um you know, if, if there's an area of racing or the industry that you're particularly interested in, um, I'd say explore that, but do it in a different way. Try and put your own spin on it. Try and, um, you know, just, just differentiate yourself because there's a lot of podcasts out there now, as you know, there's a lot of blogs out there, which are brilliant. I'm, I'm not saying that they're not, but if you can differentiate yourself and, and make yourself stand out, then that would be my main advice because in life not just industries like racing you need to go with the times and i think it's important that you keep up to speed with what the sort of the the industry is and um i think you need to adapt and just try and you know whether it be technology or the content you're discussing try and um be different and uh, don't be afraid to do something your own way Sound advice indeed. Um, so what do you do at the Racing Post now? Uh, you host the postcards, um, but tell us what actually goes into that role, because obviously I'm assuming there's a lot of prep for each week's show, uh, which normally yeah. covers seven days in racing, so a lot of work on there. Yeah, um, I mean, in terms of my role, I'm a bit of a jack of all trades, because when I came I was an intern um, I sort of started out and wanted to say yes to absolutely everything and try and get as much experience and um, just make it work the best I could um, basically um, so when I first started I think um, Bruce Millington was still editing at the time and I'm lucky that one day he just came over and he said I, I need to present something just come and stand here and talk about Donna Myler, I think it was, or something. And um, I'd you know, never been put in front of a camera before, never had any media training, no idea, as I'm sure if you watch some of those old videos, you could probably tell. Um, and in terms of the presenting side of stuff, that just grew from there. Um, you know, I'm, I'm quite happy to do that now. And um, that's a part of my job, which I, you know, I absolutely love presenting those podcasts and working with the people I work with. But my role is, is so much more than that as well. Um, obviously, journalist in name, but a lot of what I would be doing day to day now is digital managing and managing our website and our app um, and helping a lot with ideas and, and concepts like that. Um, looking into analytics and, and how things are performing and how we can change things to make things better. Um, as well as the video side of it, I've learned to edit, um, not very well granted, but I learned to edit a little bit and I can present and I can, I basically just try and do as much as I can. Um, so it does leave me to be quite busy a lot of the time, but uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. In terms of the podcasts and, and how they are um, produced, uh, we'll get a, a running order on say the, the Friday. 
and obviously we're on the Monday we're covering the weekend's action um, so we're sort of making sure we keep up to date with what's happened the different stories who's going to be on and you have to tap in so obviously for different people you have on the panel um, but yeah to be honest it's um, sort of presenting started off as you know me trying something new and and being really fortunate to have been given the opportunity to give it a go whereas now it's something that i um you know i'm very serious about and i, I want to do a very good job um when i do it so i look up to a lot of the people who who do it full time and who do it so well um but yeah pre presenting for me um yeah one of the best aspects of my job without a doubt to be honest it's is it, you couldn't call it a job really it's like having a, a a chat with your mates about the the weekend's action i mean it's just it's fantastic especially when you get people on there with strong opinions and you get a bit of debate circulating we, we like a bit of that indeed we do um when you're working early at the post and you said in the first part about working a bit with ross clark and um that Bruce Billington was still editing. Um, who who did you get inspired by early when you were working in the post? And who, if anybody, gave you some good advice that you feel improved your um, skills? Um, I everyone, you know, everyone, because the experience I had when I was on work experience and when I was an intern was so um broad and vast you know one minute i would be ringing up trainers and interviewing um the next minute i would be uh in front of a camera talking about something that had happened the next minute i was editing something the next minute i was writing something else and um, you know there are so many different incredible people at the racing post who have such brilliant knowledge um just every single person you meet would give you something different everyone has such different sort of strengths and skills um but i would say that if we're talking about presenting now then obviously i'm incredibly lucky to bruce that he thought it would be a good idea to have me in front of a camera even if it was just for that one video but he has definitely always um nurtured me and pushed me in the right direction because as i say to begin with I didn't have an I didn't have a clue at all and he sort of said right this is what you're aiming to do and this is what you're trying to do and um always I was you know after constructive criticism I wanted to be doing it better and and it took me a while to learn and I'm still learning <laughs> every single day but yeah I think you know um anyone in in who works for the racing post has has helped helped me in the early stages of my career but Bruce in particular I do have a lot to thank him for given that he has sort of led me down this path of, of presenting and then therefore opportunities coming out of that so I, I definitely am very grateful to him for um, sort of kicking that off. Um, that, that's a great answer I also actually agree Bruce there are quite a few young presenters and writers uh, at the post now you have like yourself you have um, of the racing Josh, you also have Kitty Trice working in Bloodstock, and you have um, Mark Boylan um, over on the other side of the RSC. Um, those success stories, what could racing be doing to get more young people interested, not only in watching the sport, but also perhaps um, being young sports supporters? Because you see plenty of them um, for other sports, football, rugby, cricket, etc. Yeah, um, I mean, the question here, uh, it's bandied around an awful lot, you know, what can racing do to attract young people? And I think we've come a long way. Um, I actually think we're doing pretty good. As you mentioned, some of those names, um, you know, brilliant, brilliant talents are, you know, people who are going to be working in the industry for years and years to come, and they're just in their infancy, very much like I am. Um, I think we're doing well. I think um, there isn't necessarily this need to change anything or do anything differently. I think, if anything, some some people might think um, they have an idea of what a racing person looks like, and I think we need to sort of debunk that. And mm. um, you know, people go racing for different reasons. Some people go racing for the day out. Some people are more 
you know hardcore racing fans i think we need to respect that and i remember a couple of years ago i was speaking to someone and and we were sort of saying oh well how can we get the casual racing person to to be more invested in the sport and i don't necessarily think we need to um because these people are incredibly valuable consumers if you like to racing whether they want to become devotees or not but in terms of what you're talking about and getting more young journalists involved i i wouldn't know to be honest with you i think you know the people who we have out there doing it at the minute i could name so many different people who who you know have recently joined the racing post in that in the last couple of years who are doing a great job and i i think we're doing quite well to be honest i don't think we need to worry too much about um young people because i think naturally they they're attracted to racing like anybody else like i was like you were and i think if we dumbed racing down I, I don't think we necessarily need to do anything like that i think we need to respect whatever people want to do and if if they want to get into racing then i think um you know they and they work hard at it then they've 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 got a good chance at, at doing that um and i think um you know racing racing can be very proud of the the young people it's attracted to the industry Oh, very good answer, actually. Very interesting answer. Um, speaking of the future, um, where do you see when racing comes back, the future being for the racing post? Already, you know, there's an awful lot of digital content produced. I think there's something like three or four weekly shows now. Um, there are extensive facilities that people can use online. Um, all new soaps are heading down that road. So what does the future hold for the post in particular? Well, obviously, we're, we're talking at a time, you know, I don't want to use the, un, the word unprecedented, but I just have done. Um, obviously, it's been, it's been said an awful lot recently, but it is true. Um, and, you know, I don't think we can, we can shy away from how big this is going to be for the industry. Um, and I don't know, you know, I think it would be wrong of me to sit here and, and say, I think racing's going to return then betting shops are going to reopen then and, and things like that i think that would be um that would be foolish of me when i don't i don't really know enough about the the sort of the, the health side of it and the, the economic side of it i mean it's going to have an absolutely huge impact in terms of the racing posts output i mean obviously i'm not i'm not in charge of our output or anything like that but um i know that obviously even before COVID-19 and the coronavirus that yes you mentioned we did have um, a lot of new podcasts and a lot of new shows and we we're working on a, a number of different things um digital is without doubt the the direction that we're focusing on but at the same time that's not to say that print has been abandoned um and you know that's not equally important um I think at the moment we're just going to have to wait this out and and see see what happens. But yeah, understandably, but the way people consume media these days is 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 changed so much and it's changed so quickly and it's still changing and it will continue to develop. And um, you know, we've we've all you know whether you work in in any kind of media, we've all got to stay up to speed with that. Indeed, and. Just quickly, I, I know you said that print isn't going to be banned anytime soon. Would you be saying that for the foreseeable future upon the return of racing, you believe the post is going to put out a print edition when, when it can again? Uh, again, um, I mean, I'm furloughed at the moment, like a lot of other people, and I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know the um, details of the business decisions and things like that. What I do know is, again, I'm regurgitating what I've heard, which is weeks ago when, um, you know, the shutdown happened, Tom Kerr was very optimistic that there would be a paper again, and he was very optimistic about racing recovering from this crisis, but I wouldn't like to comment too much at this stage. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your time in part two. Some fascinating insights into the future there. And next we'll return with part three.